Hey guys, how's it going? So last week I did a video called do you keep your mags loaded? Watch this and literally in the first couple minutes I'm gonna show you why I think that these mags failed and we're gonna go into it and then normally my videos are kind of just in a conversational tone and I know a lot of you guys are new here so welcome and I hope you like my other videos and then after that because I know all people don't like long videos I'm gonna get into some of the comments I got and kind of go through some of those and explain some of my my theories on the different thoughts of magazines so real quick before we finish getting into this if you haven't watched the first video yet obviously go watch that first so you know what I'm talking about and second of all yes as I stated in the previous video 99% of the time as a rule of thumb however you want to word it yes it's great to keep your magazines loaded I generally keep many of them loaded and unless there's something else going on that should not be a problem now back to the last video my whole reason for doing it was just to actually look out for all of you because I went to grab these three mags for a non-critical purpose and rounds fell on the ground so I'm like oh shoot what if this was my go-to? What if there was somebody breaking and entering? <clears throat> what if I needed to defend my life, liberty, at that moment? I would have been in big trouble. I didn't want to see any of you guys get caught in that kind of situation. So I put it out there as an alert, kind of an FYI. Don't forget about your mags because they're going to be perfect until they're not. Just didn't want to see anyone get caught in a jam, right? So that was literally my whole intent. And then like I usually do, I kind of got into BSing with you guys because... That's what I do here. I'm just myself. I like to hang out in my shop and, and talk about stuff, you know. So after reading a bunch of comments, I realized a ton of you are actually like super curious what went wrong. And a ton of you guys had tons of suggestions. So let's get right into it. I'm going to tell you guys what I think went wrong. And then for those of you who don't have much time, you can stop watching. The rest of you guys can just keep hanging out. And I hope you guys all enjoy the rest of the video too. So... The first thing was, is it the spring? It was the follower. And by the way, these are all 24 round Elander magazines. Okay. Completely compliant with YouTube's policies. 24 rounds. I have all three here and we're going to go through all of them quickly. So a lot of you said the spring, which yeah, that's kind of seems to be the heart and the soul of what feeds them. And like I said in the previous video, and I'll say it again, if it's a properly made spring, springs are made to be compressed. They're made to stay in that condition. And what actually generally wears them out is the loading and unloading, the compression and decompression. Now, this, of course, assumes it's a properly made spring because just because something's shaped like a spring, if the heat treating isn't properly, and some of you guys have knowledge of that, and you let me know, it isn't really a spring, even though it looks like a spring. But in this case, I actually believe the springs are just fine. So here's the spring right here from the Elander. This is one of the three. The main one that I showed that was jiggling around like popcorn, and I don't have any instruments to measure this, but as far as I can tell, the spring's fine. A ton of you said, well, get mags with an anti-tilt follower. These do indeed have an anti-tilt follower. In the second half of this video, I'll show you the other mag that, yeah, they do actually come with an anti-tilt follower. These magazines were stored in proper conditions, guys. In my shop, heated in the wintertime. In the summer, I run a dehumidifier. They were not even exposed in the open air. I put a towel over the top of them, right? So no dust was entering the mags. All of that was good. I know you guys have theories on steel case ammo. We'll get to that in a minute. So as you can see, I've stripped this down to the spring, the follower. Here's our floor plate. I'm going to show you the best I can on my camera, guys. I don't have a big money camera system here. It might not do it justice, but I'll try to show you what I think the problem is. And if I need to, I'll roll in a couple still pictures here. Just in a second, if I can get a better camera angle on it for you. So this is a steel bodied magazine, right? Okay. And it's obviously painted. You can see the shiny black here. Very nice external paint job. Well, when I went to finish unloading this, it was a bear. Go check out my locals video in the pinned comment if you're interested. And if you want to see the original video, that'll be in the pinned comment too. I got it unloaded, took it apart, and it was actually kind of hard just to get the follower out of the bottom even when it was empty. I noticed quite a bit of friction. So here's what I think the problem is. On the inside here, let's see if you guys can see. You see how there's little like zits? They almost look kind of like little pimples or droplets of dried paint down the sides of the body of this magazine and it's hard for me to get the right camera angle but I think you guys can see that 
both on this top side on this orientation and on the bottom. These are the sides of the mag. See that? So there's a combination of kind of like blistering and bubbling. And then there's some that are very just like sharp, pointed, spiky protrusions of, I believe it's the finish. Now, I've not gone on here and tried to remove these yet. I know that's the next step, but if I would have done that first, I wouldn't be able to share it with you. So let's take a look here. Okay, we got a good shot of it right there. See how there's little like... It might look from your standpoint, because you're looking at it through a camera. And like I said, guys, I'm doing the best with the equipment I have here in this shop. I'm a landscaper for a living, not a professional photographer or anything. But look, you can see all the way down, just kind of here and there and everywhere. Now, these are really, really hard. I think you guys can see it, but I'm just going to use this bullet tip to give you an example. So I'm going to hold it down by the mic, and I'm just rubbing on a smooth part of the steel where there's none of these dry little spikes of paint. Hear that rubbing? Now I'm going to rub across this and you guys should be able to hear what it sounds like. So you can see these are abrupt, hard chunks in here. You hear that? Now I'm just moving over, rubbing on the smooth part. Okay, so these are abrupt. I'm not trying to exaggerate the size of them, but they're large enough where, in my opinion, when the ammunition is stacked, it's a double stack, there's already going to be some friction of the side of the case on the side walls of the magazine right and also the follower is going to be interacting with the inside of the magazine okay it might not be a hundred percent you know zero um zero clearance fit or interference fit but at the same time some of these little spikes of paint or, or, or bubbles or whatever you want to call it they're protruding out enough where i could see them impeding the flow of the follower and are also the ammo that's going to be riding up and down and i know i use steel case guys i'll discuss that in just a little bit but hey it's called stacking of tolerances maybe the steel case offers a little bit of extra friction but i'm not convinced that if it was brass the outcome would have been any any different in this case to be honest with you guys like i said in the first video the lacquer didn't glue the rounds together and there is inherently maybe a little more friction with those lacquered steel rounds. I, I totally get that. These protrusions or little spikes of finish, I think are enough probably in here to impede it, whatever type of ammo I had. Now, I'd love to load these up with brass case ammo to show you guys the difference, but I'll be honest with you, I just don't have any. 6.5 Grendel ammo is so expensive, I wasn't able to find any locally here. And just didn't really have the money right now to go buy, you know, 100 rounds of that just to keep going with the video but i think you guys kind of get the point of what's going on here right one more thing before i go any further i told you guys my intention of the last video was just to give you guys a heads up so you didn't get caught in a jam and assume that your mags were fine when maybe they weren't that was literally my intention now when so many of you had so many ideas and solutions and so many of you were trying to help so many of you had questions i realized hold on this video shouldn't be over yet but I didn't want the original video too long either, so that's why I'm back for this round too, all right? There wasn't supposed to be a review at all of Elander magazines. I obviously, like with the way they functioned and stuff, it didn't look good, but that's still not my intention. I'm not trying to bash Elander right now. I don't know anybody from Elander. No affiliation with them whatsoever. I just bought these three mags with my own money over a year ago, and it just is what it is. So the anti-tilt follower, you guys that know about these mags can already see it has an anti-tilt follower here. And by pressing on the front and pushing down, the fact that it moves up and down without completely tipping itself on its side proves that these do indeed have anti-tilt followers. All right, this one I've not taken apart yet because I wanted to show you how it functions. The other one here, this is one of the three 24 round mags I showed, same thing. The spring looks fine. The follower looks fine. I don't visually see any deformations or burrs on the polymer follower itself. This spring was compressed for over a year. Just like a lot of you guys told me. Look, it's right back in the condition and size and shape that I believe it should be in. And I'm not surprised by that because, like I said, I've been shooting almost 30 years. And generally, almost always, have never had a problem with leaving my mags loaded. So, there you go. This one has kind of more of the same, not as drastic to be honest with you, but see all those speckles, okay? Little kind of like zits they look like sticking out, littered throughout. 
Let me show you one more time, depending how it's coming through on the camera. This is not dust. It's really, really not. I was shining with a bright flashlight. This is the finish of the paint. Stored in a dry environment. There's no rust underneath these either that I can tell. Obviously, I couldn't tell if it was buried underneath. But this doesn't show the signs of paint bubbling from rust. These are just like sharp. You know if you have a droplet of paint that dries when it's in mid-drip and it has a real sharp point on it? This being some type of really, really hard enamel they put on these. That's what's actually going on in the bodies of both of these mags that I took apart. This one to a little higher extent. But this one still, I think it's fair to say, has littered or scattered droplets throughout. Some of them more abrupt than others. But hey, if you ask my opinion, all it takes is one or two abrupt um, pieces sticking up. And that could be enough to get things to lock up and then kind of bind the whole thing up and make it not function like you guys saw in the original video. So there you go. That's a pretty good explanation of what went on. And now I'm going to go through and just address some of the things that were in the comments and just kind of go through it together and hang out a few more minutes. Okay, one of the common comments I got was, you buy junk, you get what you deserve. You cheap out, you get what you deserve. Buy a decent mag, buy a quality mag. I'll address that pretty quickly. It's pretty simple. And I actually kind of did in the first video. No, I actually didn't cheap out. These were bought as what I thought was a premium mag. And from what I understand by many comments, they are a premium mag. Although there's some comments that said they had terrible luck with them. But other brands were also mentioned that people had said were awesome, had terrible luck. But here's literally the provable facts of the matter. As far as being cheap, these were not inexpensive. They were not cheap. They were up at the upper end of what all the different brands cost for 6.5 Grendel mags. So I don't know what else to tell you guys. I did not cheap out. I bought three mags that were this size, 24 rounds, as well as the small five round honey mag made by C Products, shown in the previous video, and I didn't cheap out. And hey, even if I did, everybody can't afford premium things. Some people don't have as much money as other people, and I think people that are all adults are responsible for their own decisions, and I just encourage all of you to do you. Also. I got this many, many times, and I get where you guys are coming from, but I just wanted to clear it up a little bit. Because remember, the video was just a reminder for you guys to check your gear. I didn't know people would develop it into the many things it did within the comments. But this is cool, because it gives us a chance to learn a little bit more and just hang out with each other, which is what I do in all my videos. Buy a PMAG. PMAG, 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 PMAG. And many people said it's the perfect mag, and there's never been problems with the PMAG. Okay, let me say this. I think P mags are excellent mags. I own many P mags for different platforms, okay? Different sizes, different ones, and I've generally had excellent luck with them. However, there is no such thing as any one brand of anything, whether it's a firearm, ammunition, mag, vehicles, literally nothing where every single product, like in the literal sense, has never had a problem. It's just not true, guys. No matter how good a company is, they can have problems. There's comments in that last video of people who have actually had problems with PMAGs before. I know people personally that have had issues with PMAGs before. I've had a couple slight issues with PMAGs before. Not leaving them stored like this, but other issues. And I, I promise you that. But with that said, PMAGs are awesome and I love them and I own many of them. Now, here's the problem. PMAGs aren't going to be able to, and we're never going to be able to solve this issue here because guess what? Magpul actually does not make a PMAG in 6.5 Grendel. So I'm glad you guys love your PMAGs. And a lot of people, the only caliber they're familiar with is 5.56, which is definitely the most popular. And you guys use PMAGs, but they don't make them. I don't know why. They just don't. So there you go. All right, steel case ammo. Steel case is junk. I get what I deserve. Whatever. It was just literally a video trying to help you guys out so you guys would check your mags because you assume it's good, but you don't know unless you check from time to time, right? Okay, but with that said, look, guys, steel case ammo. We could debate this for two hours. This isn't going to be a two hour video, but I will say I've been shooting steel case as well as brass case ammo for about 30 years now. 
there's some advantages and disadvantages to everything in life. There's cost. There's where will it bear wear out your barrel? Will it maybe get jammed up in a mag? All of these things are to be considered. And I even mentioned in the first video that I did have lacquer stick rounds together in an AK mag once. Okay? And I've been very cognizant of that ever since. The other thing, I took a couple little notes here. An empty mag is only a paperweight. Well, yes and no. And hold on, it's actually both. Because if it's for your go-to rifle, in this case, or pistol, and you're storing it with an empty mag, well, yeah, you may as well have a paperweight. Because when seconds matter, police are only minutes away, right? That's the mantra that we live by. And it takes minutes to load up a mag, so I totally get it. However, do all mags really always need to be loaded? I don't know. It's up to you. It depends how much ammo you have, how many guns you have, and how many mags you have. First of all, everybody can't afford to load up all their mags at once. So if all you can afford is to fill up two mags, that's infinitely better than none at all. You do you. Be proud of what you were able to afford. And if you need a little more, try to save up and buy more. I definitely want to say that. Also, mags are wearable items, period. Whether they're an Elander or a P-Mag or Duramag or whatever they are, doesn't matter the caliber. Anyone who's shot a lot before knows that these are semi-disposable items. Now, I don't mean like you use it once and throw it away. That's definitely not what I mean. I just mean there's wearable parts, and if you shoot enough, you will indeed eventually usually wear a magazine out. We also have the constant threat of them wanting to ban certain capacity of mags. So... I don't think all your mags need to be loaded at all times. If you have a loadout of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mags, 27 mags, whatever your go-to loadout is, yeah, that's how many that should be loaded. Like I said before, I'll say it one more time, leaving them loaded does not generally hurt the spring. It doesn't hurt the mag. That's fine. That's actually what I do too. So I agree with you guys on that. But what if you want to have an extra 50 mags sitting away for a rainy day? For speculation that they might be banned someday. Maybe the price will go up later. Maybe you just want some to pass down to your kids. I wouldn't really call those paperweights. I would literally just call it having extra items sitting on the shelf. Hey, I keep a spare set of wiper blades for each of my vehicles just sitting in the back shop. Are they paperweights? No. Although in the meantime, they would hold down papers on a windy day, sure. No, it's just called having spares. So that's my take on that. Yes, they're loaded, and they should be loaded if they're in your loadout, but if you just have them as spares or for whatever reasons, heck, I know people that just collect different types of magazines. So if they're just in the collection otherwise, no, actually, in my opinion, you don't need to always have every single mag loaded, and they're not necessarily paperweights. They just might be spares for many reasons, and I lived through the assault weapons ban 94 through 2004, owned guns during it. They have banned mags that were over 10 rounds before, hopefully they don't ever again they better not ever again but they might so there's many reasons why people would keep extra unloaded mags sitting around which is cool other people just said the 6.5 Grendel is such a crappy round and that's what I get for not using a, a conventional round or not using 5.56 five, again I just put the video to try to help people out to be cool but some people basically said I was an idiot for using 6.5 Grendel look guys there's like over a thousand calibers of ammo out there. You do you, I'll do me. And I have tons of 5.56 rifles. Probably five AKs in 5.56 and quite a bit more of that in ARs 5.56. So trust me, I get you guys with 5.56, but I chose to also have 6.5 Grendel. And that's my choice and I'm perfectly comfortable with that. And some of you guys love Grendel, some of you don't. And that's what makes us awesome, as we all decide what we want and what we like, right? Oh, brass-cased ammo. Again, guys, I have lots of brass-cased ammo, okay? I just choose this Wolf 100 grain 6.5 Grendel loading. It has specific properties to it that I actually like, that makes it a pretty good loading. And I'm not a wealthy person, and when I bought that stuff, it was like five forty nine a box and stuff. So there you go. That's all I could afford with it not being my go-to rifle. I didn't have a couple hundred bucks to buy super duper match grade whatever for a rifle that I'm not using for home defense or life or liberty. All right, guys. Well, go on and chime back in on the comments. It's awesome that tons of new people found this channel through that last video. I hope it helps some of you guys. Just a little gentle reminder. Because, look, I've always kind of just taken it for granted, too. Just leaving my mags loaded. 
until this happened, I'm like, I'm going to check a little bit every once in a while. Just to make sure. Not because I couldn't, shouldn't keep them stored. Not because Elander are bad mags. Like, look, I have a sample size of three. They were all bought the same day, so AKA from the same lot. I don't know. And even still, in this follow-up video, I'm not trying to make this about Elander, but I showed you guys what the issues were. I hope that's cool. I wasn't trying to snub you guys on the first video. I promise. I just got to BSing in my shop, hanging out. You know, I feel like a lot of you guys have become my friends over the years on here. And I'd like you guys just to be here hanging out with me. But we all live too far away to do that. So I got to BSing and I was like, oh shoot. Well, this video has been going 16, 17 minutes. I've already reminded them all to check their mags. It's over. That was the sole purpose. The comment section reminded me that no you guys want to know what happened what went on if you guys need there to be or want there to be hey whatever you guys want that's what i do on here is hang out with all of you i'll get in there and clean up some of these little burrs droplets of paint whatever you want to call them little spiky doodad things in there and and, and then see if that totally solved my problem so if you want a part three let me know but i think this video's gone long enough for now all right, guys, I'll see you all around here soon with these mags or with some other stuff because I have some other guns that I want to review yet this evening, and I'll get those videos out too. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good one.